Hey guys, what's up? This is Heavy Metal Magazine, the 2008 spring one. In 2008, they were doing these like seasonal Heavy Metal Magazine. I, I don't know if they were doing the monthly, but they were doing like these seasonal ones. So one in spring, one in, one in fall, one in winter, one in summer. But I also think they were doing the monthly. It's a little bit weird what they were doing in 2008. In 2008, they were like a little in a little bit of a slump. This was the early 2000s where um, there was a little bit of a slump in their quality, but it's okay because like Heavy Metal Magazine is, is still good and it's like the gateway to other stuff that's also really, really good. Like you get this and you read it, but it's got, it's got a, a lot of like other content that you can get through the magazine that's really, really good. And they, they sell it to you and it's just really, really worth buying. On the back, it's pretty cool. Um, it says, um, Arkstein Decor Chapter One Pierre. It's pretty cool. It's got like a nice, um, nice, nice painting on there. Really nice. The front one is also a beautiful painting. It's a girl in like some kind of dragon armor. That is awesome. That is freaking awesome. And this is the Chaos Special, which I don't know like why it's the Chaos Special. I've looked through this a little bit just now, and um, I think I read this at the time, but this was 2008, so I don't remember what any of the stories were. But anyway, but um, this is the Chaos Special, which I don't know why. I don't like the Chaos Special. But in here, what's interesting about this is like in here, there's only actually two stories that are in here, even though they're a lot of, they're, they're big stories. There's only like two comics. And usually there's like several comics in here, like a handful, maybe like five to seven, even eight comics. And they're all like short. And there's one or two of them which are longer. And they just put that all in. And the cover, what's interesting is it's by this dude, um, Tariq Rahim, and I don't even know who he is. I mean, I'm gonna definitely check out his other stuff. But it's beautiful, look at that. That's really cool fantasy art. Chaos special, I don't even know what that is. And so, like, what I'm talking about, when, when you go in here, right away, they try to sell you, like, upsell you. Like, this thing is, it starts off, what's the price on this thing? All right, $5.99. In 2008, this was $5.99, which is the price of a magazine at the time. But this is also a lot bigger than a floppy comic book, which is like really thin. It's only maybe 20 pages. And Heavy Metal usually has like over 100 pages. Like this one has like over, what you know, like way over 100 pages, like almost 120 pages. And way over 100 pages and just a lot more content. And at the time, I think, you know, comic books were like 199 or 290. I think they were like 299. They have been 199 for a long time. And, um, and yeah. So what I love about this thing is the, the artwork and then like when you open it, you right away, it goes into the first comic. I don't know, what do you think of this art on this? I, to me, it honestly does not look like a heavy metal magazine comic. It looks a little bit too cartoony. It is like fantasy though. So you have like, there's a lot of fantasy like characters and fantasy things going on. But honestly, I don't, I don't know. Maybe like the story's good. Because like the art could be like forgivable if the story's really good and the story could be forgivable if the art is really good. It's funny because when you get a comic book and you just like read, if you just like enjoy the art and the story's not that great, you're like still having a good time. And if you're enjoying the story and the art's not that great, you're still enjoying it. You know, especially when the art and the story are good, like it's like, wow, it's amazing. But it's still, if you have one and not the other, you're halfway there. Um, There's some weird stuff. I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure like, this is like, so I'm gonna flip through this one because, and it's pretty big. I mean, they give it a, they put a lot of content on here. And, but I don't know, maybe I'll read some of it and see if it's, if it's good. But around 2008, you know, sometimes you wouldn't get great stuff. But some of the books in here are actually pretty cool. So you open to this page and it's a book basically thing where you get, it's a science fiction book club where it's like five books for a dollar. This is beautiful. This is um, a Julie Bell painting on the front and some of these books like I, I doubt it would be um look it's like sa save all this money I, I don't know I, I don't know if it was like for a dollar but if you look at this one that they're offering here this is the Boris Faleo and Julie Bell you know combo art book and they're saying it's 20 cents in their thing seriously this book was 30 bucks I know because I bought this book for 30 bucks and they, they have it for 20 cents and I didn't even see this. I don't know, in 2008, how did I not see this? I, I don't know. Cause this was like, okay, 2008, 
internet, like buying online and buying and getting stuff delivered to you wasn't a thing that you really trusted. Like you didn't know that if you go, went ahead and gave your money to some company that would actually send you something good. But if you look at this, like look at this one, Fantasy Art Now, awesome book. You should definitely check it out. Definitely get this book. If you're into fantasy art, fa I think they're still making them. And it's 20 cents with this like, um, with this like science fiction book club. But then again, I'm thinking that they're, um, that they want you to like, yeah, they give you five books for 20 cents, whatever, for a dollar. But then they want you to buy like an additional five books for full price. So they're still coming out ahead on it. But this is actually still pretty good, pretty much a good deal. Um, and there's a bunch of other stuff. Stephen King, Tolkien, Dune, a lot of like sci-fi and like, they also put fantasy in here. Terry Pratchett is in here. Um, Arthur C. Clarke. Um, she's Conan the Barbarian, like a uh, Robert E. Howard's Conan is in here. Um, there's a lot of Buffy's in here. There's a lot of stuff. Wizards. Um, Robin Cobb, if you guys have ever heard of him, her or I mean, but Stephen R. Donaldson's in there. Jeez, a lot of good stuff. I did not see this in 2008. I probably would have gotten it. I just wasn't like in the thing of actually buying um, stuff through magazines or through the internet, but this was actually pretty legit. You just could, didn't trust any of these things at the time. Here's a weird one, like some kind of like monster story. Like there's some kind of like warthog, like big sort of like boar kind of like creature and then a dude. I don't know what that's about, but that's pretty cool. See, that's more of like what a heavy metal comic is. They're just like badass and, oh no, it's going back to the first freaking comic. See, this what I'm talking about is like, I don't know, I'm not into the, this one. It's just long though. It's like half of the thing long. And honestly, like, this is why I wasn't into, like, I would still get the, the magazines. For one thing, I would get them even if the, the artwork that wasn't that great or whatever, because it's just the content you get, like, you, you would get, like, a great cover, a beautiful magazine, and then I was used to, see, I was buying these things, and I was used to, like, getting them from the 80s and the 90s, and the content was really, really good. But a lot, there's a lot of other stuff that fell. What's interesting is this thing that fell is like a um, a weird pirate of the Caribbean thing, right? Like you buy the magazine and then it like turn you on to all this other stuff like Pirate of the Caribbean or like um, some of this like anime stuff. Um, just some weird, like a lot of really cool edgy um, sci-fi. This is cool. Look at this one, the pinks. I recognize the art is this dude uh, Lorenzo Sperlonga, and he's a really good pinup artist. Like I, I'm friends with him on Facebook, and I really love his art. I, I don't remember like where I met him or heard about him, but I really love the art. He was doing, I don't know, I, I recently, he, he said something about doing uh, work for, that he was like, he used to do work for Hustler Magazine, but I mean, it's really good. It's like realistic looking pinup. You know, like like real, like pinup realism. You know, because there's a lot of pinup that doesn't look re very, very real. And that's pretty cool. And let's see what else we got in here. A more like, just like anime. Well, okay, so the thing is like in 2008, they're promoting anime. They're they're giving you videos. Um, they're giving, they're selling videos. They're selling comic books with anime. They're selling like anime stuff. And in 2008, I don't know how popular anime, Anime was like not as popular as it is now because anime now is sort of like part of the whole comic explosion that happened with uh, all of the Marvel movies and um, all the Marvel movies and the DC movies and stuff. It made people start to read comic books and that happened later than sooner. I think it happened after 2010. Um, but even, even though, I mean, there were some people into anime and stuff like that, it wasn't that big. It, you know, it, at the time, but yeah. Just, this is weird, look. It even tells you like, it gives you this order form where there's like a whole page where you can like order like everything if you wanted to. But I guess it didn't like cost them anything. This is cool. The second comic in here is pretty cool. This is um nice. It looks like a werewolf story or something. Look at that, like lightning and a freaking mansion and it's like storms happening and stuff. 
I even like, it's this is Descore, and it looks like a French thing, but this comic like started off French with Metal Herlant, um, and uh, they became like heavy metal after that. That's pretty cool. I, I like this art a lot more, where like it's a lot of emotion, and like that really looks like a bad guy. You know, and everything, even though it's not like full color, it's like a uh, um, limited palette color where they're only using a few colors. But because of the, the way they're, they're painting it with the colors, the whole thing looks dark and gritty, right? Sort of like uh, Sin City looked a little bit in the comic and in the movie. Damn. See, I love when it's action like that. This is what comics are for. See, the, this, this thing, this, this, this actual picture, when you read a book, you don't see this picture. You might see the explanation of the, like like someone describing like author describing this action taking place, but you don't actually see the picture. And this looking at this is better than just looking at words describing what this is supposed to look like in your imagination. Beautiful stuff, just big violent like freaking fights going on in this. Jeez, people scream! Oh my god, this is cool. So this is a real action story. See, um, I don't know what it's about, but it, it's really cool looking. And see, when you look at something like this, because it's well drawn, you could tell they put a lot of thought into it. And it's probably well written also. And it's just, it's well done. And even if like, isn't that greatly written, it's still enjoyable to see all of the, um, the artwork in the comic and everything like that. All of the artwork in here. Pretty cool. Nice, like, artwork in this. Jeez. I don't even know what... It's like, when you look at the artwork, and then you're like, wow, I, this is cool artwork. I really want to read this story because of the artwork. I think people should really take this into... You know, when they make movies, focus on the art of the movie. Because movies with good art, it's it does something... It makes the movie better. Because if you focus on the art... You also focus on other things in the movie that are important that, you know, tell a story. Because just the art itself, when you see a movie with great art, you really want to really like it. You really want to like, um, you know, know more about it and stuff like that. You know, cool. Look at that one. I don't even know what's going on with that. But just, it's like, it's not that it's just a drawing. It's that it tells a story. The drawing itself. And when you look at it, you're like, oh, I wonder what this is, what, what's happening in this panel. Or I wonder what's happening with this drawing. Or I wonder what the character is saying. Why is the character have that expression? Why is it that picture? Like, what is it saying? Now, when you look at it, it's like, you really don't know what's going on with it or what's happening to it. But um, yeah, no, I, I definitely want to read this. This is so cool. And I've never heard of the actual, the, uh, the writer for this but it's you know, the story this is chapter one pierre and the name of it is the score and i think the arter the artist is argstein and you know a lot of times you won't see a lot of like popular artists but you will see very very good art by people there's a lot of people that make amazing art who are not like that popular as an artist like show you that I think I think that's in camera yeah oh man pretty cool like the first one like I don't know when I look at the first one I'm when I look at the first story I'm like eh, I don't I, I look at the artwork and I'm like I don't care about this I, I'm not I don't care what's happening in this one but then I look at this one it's compelling and I'm like yeah this is interesting what's going on with this and maybe it just resonates with me and stuff. Because I'm sure, like, I mean, some people, like, there's a whole bunch of people that like cartoony stories. And it's okay. It's lighthearted. But not in Heavy Metal Magazine. It's like, Heavy Metal Magazine's edgy fantasy, sci-fi, adventure, you know, thriller, whatever. You know, not it's not really drama. But, I mean, it could be. But it's also edgy and, like, really cool and, like in a way, you know, sort of like something you don't, you don't get every day. It's sort of like, you know, like trauma that, 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 that those people that did the toxic Avenger and all the trauma movies, 
it's that like you know what to expect from Troma. like it's edgy it's weird it's like over the top it's like you know they just go overboard with what they're what they do and stuff like that and you know what to expect from a trauma movie and you know when something is a trauma movie and when it's not a trauma movie you know like the toxic avenger or like some other movie that's like that you expect a certain thing from trauma because they, they just make a certain kind of movie um you know and you you kind of expect the same thing from heavy metal. Like you expect their stuff. Like if they're putting like Mobius up there and Louis Royo and Boris Vallejo and doing all this artwork from these people and doing comic books and you know, from Manara and Serpieri and stuff like that. And all of these people, I don't know if they ever did a comic book, a comic from um, uh, Jodorowsky, but he just does his own stuff. Like he doesn't, give like his comic work to another a third party he just he releases his work and he's basically a movie guy i mean he did he did some comic books but he's a movie guy like he i mean he's also a comic book guy i think like when he doesn't have the budget for the movie he makes the comic book is what what i hear about this stuff i dig this i think this is cool look at the end it's just like all like demonic looking like that that whole brown and like you know, like that's sort of like brown and you know, became all red and freaking the different colors they're using now because it just gets more, it got more and more demonic and, and weird looking. Damn, that's cool. You know, it's that's really cool. This is something where you don't see in, in regular comic books. Like where, where do you see something like this in regular comic books, you know? I love that, you know, that this, I love the stuff that's in here. Uh, God, more of this stuff. Amazing. <laughs> I hope this is good. I'm going to try to read it. I, you know, I really am going to try to read it. What I do like about, about this kind of format where they have like a few comics in here is that if you read a comic and it's not for you, like you just go to the next comic, you know? It's not like when you buy a comic book and you'll, you spend like $2.99 or $3.99 now, that's how much they cost now, and you buy it and you realize the comic isn't for you, you don't really like it, you're kind of, that's it. Like that's the only thing that they have is that one comic. So if you don't like the comic, you pretty much just spent your money on something you didn't like. But with heavy metal, it's like, if you don't like a comic, well that's okay, there's usually like four or five other comics that are in there. Just read the next one, maybe you'll like that one better. And usually like one or two of them will be really, really good. Or sometimes all of them are really, really good. This is kind of crazy, it's just like all demonic. It just got more and more demonic in, in this comic. I don't even know what it's about. But just by looking at it, um, and it's not like, I don't know, it, yeah, it, it's done like, it's just well drawn. I mean, it's beautifully well drawn. And I love how it's like, there's not like a ton to read in this. It's basically, it's basically an art driven comic where like the whole page, there's very, very little to read. There's like a few captions here and there. And you're basically looking at the art more than anything else. But it's, it, you know, it's interesting because it's art driven. You can always tell a story driven comic because they really focus on the story and the amount of words that are in it and not so much on the artwork or how they're how it's really drawn. But um, the way this is drawn, it's just amazing. Let's see what else is in here. Ah. And there's a lot of it, like half of the book is this comic. See, like it gets more and more demonic. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Until it's like demons flying in the air with bat wings. That is awesome. Dude, that is cool. And it doesn't like, they don't show you this right away, but they do show you this after a while. Like, wow. Like just demons and that woman from before. And like, that is cool. They, they took like some kind of story and they just like made it more and more demonic until there's like demons flying in the air. That's pretty cool. And it's like, when you re read that, you're like, when you look at that, you're like, what is that about? No, he's getting attacked by the woman. She's like the demon hunter, huntress. And then there's like more weird stuff, like an eye, weird stuff happening and magic all over the place and stuff like that. Jeez. Oh man. That's just cool. That is just cool art. 
That is really cool art. The demon like picks up a car and throws it. That's strong demon, man. Jeez, that's so cool. Let me see. Oh God, that's so cool. Like it turns into this demon battle. Like th this woman that was in the story like against a bunch of demons. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> oh, is that, is that awesome? This score. This is actually part one. So that this is the part one. Like it gets, I don't know if this is like, it says it's part one. It says part one. It says chapter one. I don't know if they're, they're going to continue it in the next issue or not. They usually don't continue things in the next issue, but maybe that's, how, that's what they're doing now. And like here, like it's pretty cool. Like the last page is like the specials. So that they sell you like, hey, if you like this issue of Heavy Metal, you can buy all these other issues of Heavy Metal. And they give you a pretty good price too. Like they don't like, they give you like a decent price on the back issues, a little bit more expensive than the current issue. But if you, but it's got a lot of content. So it's definitely, I think is worth it. A lot of good ones too. And they will, they kind of like show you the better ones, the really good issues and stuff like that. That's what I like about them also. They recommend the better ones. Like out of all of the hundreds of issues that they have, they recommend like these, this one page. They're like, this is kind of the best stuff. This is the best of, if you like heavy metal, you probably like these because a lot of people like this one or whatever. And then it's like the, the last, that's pretty cool. I don't even know what this is or what's going on with it, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, man, heavy metal, the magazine. 2008 springtime 2008 yeah man um what'd you think what'd you think of the magazine let me know in the comments thanks for watching i hope you guys enjoyed the video like and subscribe check out my other videos if you want and yeah i'll see you guys in another video later take care